always shake your cans vertically like this like this and vertically because what you want to do is break up all that pigment stuff in the bottom of the can these cans are not made in the u.s there at this moment there's no widely distributed high quality american graffiti spray paint it doesn't it's not made in america none of them are they're all made overseas so they have to travel a long way to get here and on top of that this is much more pigmented than something you get at the hardware store. So uh, do yourself a favor, always make sure your cans are thoroughly, thoroughly agitated before use. All right, let's get started with our fill. Let's go ahead and get that flame super skinny loaded up. Uh, but just a quick reference, these come stock with the blue dot cap. You know what, why don't I do a couple sprays with this cap and compare it to the flame cap? That way you can see the difference. There's a few different ways when you're doing characters. I have a few friends that like to build up from the darkest shade all the way to the lightest shade. I know people who start with the middle shade and then fade in with the dark and light shade. Um, I don't think I know anyone who starts with the lightest shade first. I don't know anyone who does that. I don't think that would work very well. Um, I'm gonna do the technique where you, you just get it buffed in with the middle shade and then we'll shadow up with the dark shade and then highlight with the light shade. Does that make sense to you guys? Think three dimensional, like a ball. Where the light hits it, it's the brightest. Uh, where it spills off is the middle, middle gradient and where the light is not hitting is gonna be the darkest or black. We're gonna simulate a bust, like in a museum, I guess. But again, this is graffiti style. It's not gonna be photorealistic. I know people who can do it, and maybe we'll bring them in someday. But this is gonna be more of a graffiti style. Um, but we want that nice flat lighting. You know? So, let's see how it looks. But in the meantime, let's take a look at how these caps write. So this is the stock blue dot that comes in the Molotov Premium. And as you see, it's a soft spray with a medium-sized line. Um, it doesn't get super fine. If you try to get too close, it does get a little bit mushy. But it's a great soft outline cap for uh, just doing, you know, regular everyday type of graffiti. Um, it's a good jack of all trades, but for me, it doesn't really do anything well. It does everything kind of okay. But I think that's kind of a compromise that manufacturers have to make when they make these paints, because they have to think of like a variety, wide variety of people. Again, if it was up to me, everything would come with New York fat caps on it. Let's take this off and we'll just see what this cap's like in comparison. Yeah, it's a much, it's a less fady line, harder, um, cleaner line. Actually really nice on the Molotov. So yeah, let's, uh, it probably wouldn't be very good for filling that, but I have, I have a feeling, well, well, it'll take a little longer, but it's not too bad. Let's just rock it. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill this in. And again, I had it pre-sketched, uh, and that was only to save time. Maybe in, maybe in the future I'll, I'll film the sketching part, but I'm a busy boy, as you guys know. Right now I'm just filling in this cheek with the, uh, the mid-tone, which is the middle gray neutral. And uh, again, you could start with the darkest shade. Um, I just thought for the sake of the video, you would see the effect better. I might be wrong. But again, this, this video is all about perspectives. As you can see, the, uh, the thin tip is thin, but it does put out a good amount of paint. So I have to say it's actually a pretty nice cap. It's very controllable. So I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. And again, we're painting Socrates. Right now I'm just using the middle shade just to get everything highlighted where it needs to be. And then we'll come back in with the dark and light shades and work it. And again, this is just one style of painting. There are many different ways you can do this, or uh, many ways you can skin a cat, they say, right? So we're just doing one particular way of doing it. And again, I think this would be the best, one of the easier ways to see the change for you guys. <clears throat> All right, so let's get that cheek filled in there. So see, I think this is working out great because now you can see the white where I sketched it out. You can kind of see how it's coming together. If I wasn't painting this on the video, I would probably start with a dark shade. And you know, we'll, we'll do that on another video so you can see that style as well. So now we have the upper part of the face filled in. I'm going to go ahead and start um, lacing in some color here on the lips and whatnot. I don't think I'm going to touch the beard yet because um, I'm going to paint that last. That layer will come afterwards. So let's go ahead and start filling in. Here's the upper lip.
little bit of flesh under the lip. So let's paint down here, because he's going to be like a, uh, like a broken bust. You know, like one of those uh, marble busts. And this gray might, this gray for the middle tone might be a little dark for that, but we didn't really discuss it beforehand. I might use a, a lighter shade in a future version of one of these, but we needed a good gray scale. And this is a beautiful, beautiful shade of gray. So for all you out there who are gonna comment, like, that's not technically the shade of gray. Just, just use your imagination, will you? Just use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, not granite. It was marble. Didn't they? They did them out of marble. I think that's what it was. Not granite. One of these days, I'm gonna go to Greece. Hopefully, it's still gonna be around in ten years. I don't know when I'm gonna get there. So much amazing history in one little country. So much impact on the world. Since, since he's not real human or whatever, the whites of his eyes will have to be the neutral shade. We might make him a little bit lighter. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. And again, this is a... Um, just get in there and gesture it in. Don't be afraid if it's not perfect. Because again, I've told you guys this many times, the thing with spray paint is uh, you always have an eraser in the can. You can always go right over the color you just went up, right? I'm starting to get this other hand wet. Maybe I should start wearing a glove over here. How you doing over there, Stinks? Are you cold? Are you cold or are you, are you warm? Are you cold? She feels pretty warm. She's 16 years old, guys. Still kicking it. When, oh, a man could be only so lucky to enjoy his life with a dog like that. You should have seen her when she was young. Australian Shepherd dogs, some of the best dogs in the world. This is gonna be my darker shade. And again, it's dark green neutral. So it's a, it's a few um, shades darker than the one that I've been using now. So it'll be great for doing the shadowy foundational parts of the character that I'm doing. Who is Socrates, by the way? Of course I got that flame blue thin tip. But what I'm going to do is go back over all these white lines that gave you a visual reference and uh, start chipping in some of the, the darker details. Once that's done, um, I'll come back with the middle gray and clean up anything or use the darker um, gray to do fades if necessary. You know, I might, might do some kind of shadow or something like that. I don't know if that's what I'm going to do there, but as an example, you know, you can use that the darker color to create a depth to your heart. Again, think of like a sphere in the light, right? So, um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and just start chiseling in the outline part. That way you can kind of see how we build it up. So first, um, go ahead and just start outlining the, the face. You see how I just kind of went that, like that? It doesn't have to be perfect, so just get loose and just go with it. And again, his bulbous nose. All right, let's do the upper lip. And then the lower lip. And let's see, let's do the eyes. This eyelid's a little bit off. We'll, we'll fix that. Don't worry about that. Remember, built-in eraser in the can. The next step is I'm just going to start chiseling in the outline for his beard. And remember, Socrates was a... Uh, he was known to be a rather disheveled man. So don't worry about the beard being perfect. Just let it flow. Let yourself go to the tempo. I don't remember the rest. All right. <laughs> Socrates was really seeking some truth in his life. He just wanted the best for people. Sometimes philosophy is looking cool.
So again, we're gonna try and make it like a bust. So I'm just gonna kind of break it up here at the bottom. You know, I think with these videos, I just want you guys to be curious. I want you to do the art. I want you to be a sprayer, you know, but I want you to, to like use that one little life that you have to go explore the world and explore what life's really about, you know? Because there are universal truths. There are universal like ideas that do transcend cultures, you know? This guy had a lot of them. Awesome dude. All right, I just had like a quick change of ideas. Um, I was gonna do the beard light, but it, I was trying to emulate a, a, a bust, right? Not really do photo real, but still graffiti style. But it would look really weird if, because if it's technically a stone, the hair wouldn't be a different color. Now, if my history is right, I think they actually used to paint. Like what we see as the bust was actually, uh, they would paint them. So they were full color. But over time, the coloring obviously wore off because they used like natural pigments and whatnot. It'd be interesting to see what they look like in their time, you know? Maybe someone who knows a bit about history and archeology span can comment on that. That mustache looks bigger than that one, doesn't it? Well, I guess he's disheveled, so it's probably okay. Oh, I'll go back. When, when I'm done filling this in, what I'm gonna do is step back and look at it and see if any of the proportions are weird. I don't know yet. I'm so used to painting like freight trains and shit, like being so close to the surface I'm painting, which is probably why I spent most of my career doing simple pieces, you know? Street art is usually the realm that I just didn't really enter very often. But I like it. I like, I like all art. But my heart and soul is of a dirty tagger kid. All right, so let's go ahead and get this filled in. I hope I'm doing the steps in a way where you can you can kind of really grok what's going on. I think you are. But if, if, if anything looks weird, again, just comment on the YouTube video. I will answer. Oh, the cap's clogging. Look at that. Gotta get a new cap, guys. Someone was asking me how to unclog caps. And you know, you can get things like the Montana spray lacquer, or not lacquer, the spray solvent and stuff like that. But uh, honestly, I've never really found anything that truly fixes the problem once they're fully clogged. If they're kind of clogged, you can usually kind of get away with it with the spray solvent. But once they've dried up and fully clogged, I've dipped caps in different types of lacquer thinners, you know, different things like that. It, it just never works. They don't, if it does spray again, it doesn't spray the way it did, you know? So if you want, we can explore that. People have been asking about that, but honestly, I just don't think it's worth the time. I, as I always tell people, if you like a cap, buy it by the 100 pack. Because one, you could run out of stock. Two, um, well, could run out of stock, I guess. <laughs> But you want to have them on hand, you know what I mean? If you really love the cap, you want to have them on deck. You know what I mean? So I guess that's what I'm saying. So anyways, let's uh, let's get some caps here. Hey, what's up, Steaks? You getting a little sunbathing going on? Yeah, good girl. She just lays around these days. Okay. All right, that cap works. So let's go ahead and uh, fill in down here. Let's go ahead and get him filled in, and then we'll start playing around with the uh, portions. And then we'll deal with the shadowing. And then we'll be done. I love filling in. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Like I really zen when I'm doing that. I don't know why, I just love it. Okay. So we got the basic fill. I'm gonna step back really quick and look at my proportions and see how screwed up it is. Hold on. Yeah, so I just need more thickness over here, basically. He's a little tilted to the side, but maybe he's just kind of like that, you know what I mean? Again, really quick. 
Not a lot of referencing. Just wanted to get a drawing going here. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and start cutting back with some of this lighter gray. Just kind of uh, cleaning up parts that need to be cleaned up. Should just take a second here. So now we've got um, the foundation of it mostly. So what I'm going to do is start coming back with the darker shade and just start working my shadows. What I'm doing is I'm trying to fade out. Unfortunately the wind is blowing this way right now, so it's like blowing it back. <laughs> oh, that's my struggle. No worries. Um, so I, what I think I'm gonna do is emulate like light coming from here. So we'll have a little shadowing here and here, but like this part of his face will be lighter and this part will be a little bit darker. Does that make sense, guys? Again, this is just gesturing it in slowly. I don't want that to be. I don't think I want that to be such a hard line. It'll be a softer line. I'll wait for that to dry before I address that again. <laughs> I think in the Greek statues, the hair is more like curly like that, but I don't know. I'm just having fun. I'm going to do it more like that style, I think. Now this part, I'm just kind of going to build up his beard a little, so just bear with me really quick. I'm just going to build it up and then beat it back.
so I'm just gesturing in the beard stuff. Um, it's just a series of layers, and there's a few different ways you can do it, and I'm honestly just kind of getting through it right now. But uh, you just do you. Just draw little squiggly lines. And I'm sure there's some technique that somebody's screaming right now. Like, no, I do it this way. Please, illuminate me. I ask you to illuminate me in every video. So if you want to illuminate me, please do. But uh, let's go ahead and get this in here. So we can get Mr. Socrates all finished. A shadow on those hairs there. All right. Now I think there was another shade we were using, right? A lighter shade? So far we've used the uh, dark gray neutral and the middle gray neutral, which are two great shades, but we haven't done any of the highlights yet. So we're gonna use the light gray neutral for that. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of gesturally in, put the highlights going that back the opposite direction. You'll see what I'm talking about. Cause again, we kind of want the light hitting mostly here and darker on this side with some highlights, of course. And again, this is graffiti style. It's not photo real. Uh, we're not there yet. We're just, do, we're just having a little fun, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how this looks when I get the highlights on. I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to start by dusting it, just doing a little dusting, just to kind of build it up. I might get rid of that.
think we're making some really great headway. Um, I think I'm gonna come back in with my middle gray color to kind of beat back some of the light in some of these parts. Maybe like, uh, especially right here, I use a lighter shade. I think I'm gonna stick with the darker gray for that. Um, it was a choice I made, but I can fix it. And we're just dusting just to kind of beat back some of those hard lines because it is graffiti style but we're trying to at least have to be true to the aesthetic a little bit you know Let me go ahead and uh, right now I'm just taking the darker shade and uh, beating back the light stuff with the dark just to kind of create consistency. You feel me? And again, this is all just gesturing. It doesn't have to be perfect unless that's what you want to do. If perfection is your thing, by all means, go be perfect. Me, on the other hand, I'm happy being slightly imperfect. I'm far from it. I think his nose needs more bulbousness, don't you? Alright, so basically we just did that with these three shades of gray, so we ended up not using some of those other colors, like, like I said. But we're going to do other videos. I got plenty of these grays left, uh, so we're going to be painting some other characters. Uh, I actually just got this book on famous faces, so we might actually be rocking some pretty cool people, you know? Uh, but anyways, uh, that's the basic how I sketch it out. Hopefully you've learned a little something, and hopefully I, I, uh, I conveyed it well to you. And if I didn't, feel free to ask questions. Mm -hmm.